Don't forget the purpose of a secure credit card. The purpose of a secure credit card is to get you an unsecured credit card. The purpose of a secure credit card is also to improve your credit score to where you'll never need a secure credit card again, okay? So keep that in mind. But nowadays, most companies will take that security deposit, that'll be for the secure credit card, and then they'll upgrade you as long as you're making your payments on time. Um, obviously, you're not being late, you're not going over your limit. They're using the card the right way that they want you to do it. And in about three to six months, Hello everyone, today we're gonna to talk to you all about how to get a credit card with no credit history. Let's get right into it. So in this video, we're gonna break down the proven strategies to get approved for your first credit card. And we're gonna also show you how to build that credit from scratch using that credit card as well, all right? Now we're also gonna show you all a couple ways to unlock a couple of rewards and benefits even if you don't have any credit history, okay? Now you don't necessarily have to have a zero score because uh, sometimes people have some type of score, uh, but it's pretty much if it's not established. So unestablished credit is usually if you have only student loans in your credit report or you simply have no accounts at all or less than one, probably by less than two accounts. That's usually considered no credit history or light credit history, okay? Are you ready to get your first card? Let's get started. So the first thing that you have to understand is that there's different types of credit cards, especially if you're just starting out as a beginner, okay? Uh, the first types of cards are gonna be secured credit cards. These are essentially cards where you have to put a deposit and that deposit is going to be your limit. I'm gonna break this down a little bit further, okay? And and then an unsecured card is the opposite in which you get a credit card, but you don't have to give a deposit. And so essentially you're getting approved just because of you just building credit or your previous credit history. Now you also have your student credit cards as well. Now these type of credit cards are essentially you have to be a college student, okay? Uh, you do have to have a minimum age of 18 years old in order to apply for these types of credit cards. A student credit card is really not anything special. However, sometimes you can get uh, some perks, some benefits uh, by simply getting some cash cash back or maybe discounts if you buy certain things at a certain place. But again, you can easily still get it approved for an unsecured credit card uh, or of course potentially a secured credit card if you have to. Then you have retail credit cards. Now these are gonna be easier to, to, to get unless you've had a previous relationship in the past and it wasn't best. But for the most part, these are gonna be low limit credit cards just so they can sell you stuff. So don't be surprised if you get approved and it's like a 150 limit or a $250 limit, maybe a $300 limit, because again, they just want you just to start out by buying things or stretching out your purchase. They wanna turn your $25 or $50 purchase into a $150 purchase by simply letting you get a credit card, especially if you don't have credit history. If you haven't done so already, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Real quick, if you're looking for a cheap account that's gonna help you build your credit score every single month, then check out this account. It's only $10 a month and it reports to all three credit bureaus. Scan this QR code to learn more or click the link in the description below. Now back to the video. Now let's talk about some strategies to increase your approval chances, especially for an unsecured credit card. But let's start off with a secure credit card, okay? Now, first off, you have to have a security deposit and this is essentially money that you give the credit card issuer or the bank and they keep that money. And that money is essentially gonna be your credit limit. So for example, let's say you give a credit card company or bank $500. That means that $500 is going to be your limit. So if you swipe that credit card for $500, you've essentially maxed that credit card out. Even though they already have your money, that does not mean that they can actually take that money and use that towards the payment to actually pay your bill. They're holding on to that money to secure the fact that you're actually gonna pay the bill. But here's the problem. Some people think that since the bank already has their money, they think that they're gonna use that money to pay the bill when that's not the case. As a matter of fact, you don't get that money back unless you close out the account, okay? And this is key to remember because some people, they start out with a secured credit card and not long ago, many credit card companies that gave you a secure credit card would not, I repeat, they would not upgrade that card or change it to an unsecured credit card, which means that some people still have that secure credit card. They have, they're now in the 600s, 700s, or even 800s, and that bank still has their money. If this is you, you need to go ahead and close out that account and get your money back because credit score to where you'll never need a secure credit card again, okay? So keep that in mind. But now, Nowadays, most companies 
will take that security deposit. That'll be for the secure credit card. And then they'll upgrade you as long as you're making your payments on time. Um, obviously, you're not being late. You're not going over your limit. They're using the card the right way that they want you to do it. And in about three to six months, they're going to upgrade you. And we'll go over some of those card companies that are actually doing that. Another option is, of course, becoming an authorized user. Now, this is only if you want to build a relationship with a certain bank so they can have you on their profile. So like Chase Bank or Navy Federal or whatever the case may be, any of these banks, any bank is typically good, especially if it's a bank that does more than just credit cards or they have business accounts. They do auto loans. They do auto loan refinancing. They do personal loans. The more accounts and the more activity that a bank sees you have, even if you're not the primary customer, you're gonna be in their database. And they're gonna say, you know what? We like the account that this person is on, so this means that they're probably gonna be just like this person in the future. So it's a great way to build a relationship, uh, you know, to do that. And of course, you can do this with a family member or a friend as well too, all right? Then of course, going with a, a student secured credit card, we talked about that. This is ideal, especially if you're a student and you don't have any credit history. A retail uh, store card, we talked about that. However, I did want to mention sometimes they have higher interest rates because they're hoping that you use a lot of the credit card and then they hope that you only make the minimum monthly payment. So again, when you're doing this, you don't want to do it this way. You most definitely want to pay it in full or pay majority of it off if you can. Otherwise, it's going to have a higher interest rate and they're going to start charging you interest based on the balance that you leave with the credit card. OK, now these are some of the uh, top companies I strongly recommend. Number one is going to be Capital One, and that's going to be an unsecured credit card with Capital One. OK, this is called their platinum card. Usually you get about a 300 to 500 dollar limit with this type of card and you will qualify for limit increases every three to six months. Then you have the Capital One Platinum Secure. In my opinion, this is one of the best secure credit cards on the market. Here's why. They have a three tier system. They have a $50 approval, a $100 approval and a $200 approval. OK, that means it's based on how either bad your credit is or how light your credit is. But chances are if you've been denied for an unsecured credit card, then that means you're most definitely going to qualify again, unless you had a previous relationship and you messed it up with Capital One, then you can most definitely get approved with the $50 or $100 deposit. Or of course, if they don't like anything on your credit report, then you're more than likely going to have to put down a $200 deposit. OK. And then, of course, a Discover card. Now, what I like about Discover as well as Capital One is that they will upgrade your secure credit cards over time. OK. Now, Discover, they have a flat $200 that's due, not a 50, not a 100. It's a flat 200. However, However, they do look to upgrade your card from a secure credit card to an unsecured credit card after about three to six months of being with them. Now, there's a lot of other options that are out there as well, too. I do want to mention that. But one thing to keep an eye on is going to be the additional fees that they the fees that are there. And don't forget, when you get a credit card that has an annual fee, some of these cards, that's going to be your first bill. So keep that in mind as you are going through your credit card journey as well. Real quick, if you haven't done so already, be sure to download our free ebook. You can actually scan this QR code or you can click the link in the description below. Now back to the video. Next is going to be building and strengthening your credit. This is actually using the credit card the right way. OK, so how do you do that? Number one is keeping your balances low. That means if your credit limit is, let's say, 300, it doesn't really matter what the limit is. You really want to focus on percentages. OK, so you want to be using seven to 10 percent of the credit card. Let's just say 10 percent to keep the number easy. OK, now. If your limit is 300, that means 10% times 300 is going to be $30. That doesn't mean that you can't spend more than 30. That doesn't mean that you should spend more than 30. That just means that if you want to see the best result of having that credit card as it pertains to your credit score, then you most definitely want to keep that balance in between seven to 10 percent utilization. OK, then, of course, paying on time. I always recommend that you use a small bill uh, like Apple Music, Netflix, Hulu, Spotify. And you're also accomplishing that 10 percent of the utilization as well. Now, since it's a bill that you already have, instead of you looking for things to go ahead and buy, it's easier to just go ahead and put that credit card on auto pay. When you put it on auto pay, you don't have to worry about it because when you think about it, your Apple Music already is on auto pay or whatever your streaming service is. Uh, just think about your current subscription services and many of them you'll notice they're already on auto pay. 
all you're doing is changing what? The payment method. And that's one of the best ways to do it. Also paying the balance off in full, if you most definitely can do so, that's gonna reduce your chances of being charged for interest, okay? And the reason why I say reduce is because sometimes people think that they paid off the credit card or they had interest from some other previous payments from the previous month, and then now the interest is being charged on that. You can always look to see what your credit card bill is, pay it off, and then you'll be good to go. And understand that it's gonna impact your utilization. Again, we're not saying that you can't use the credit card, but you have to understand, for example, if let's go back to the 300 limit credit card situation. If your limit is $300 and then you end up swiping for $275, you're using about 90%, if not over 80% of that credit card is being used. Anytime you get very close to the limit or over 50%, really over 30%, you're gonna start to see your credit score fluctuate, usually downward, mainly because you're using too much of the credit card. If you wanna see the best impact for your credit score as it pertains to your credit cards, it's always best to keep the utilization between seven to 10%. Also, if you've used any of these credit cards that we talked about, Capital One, Discover, or you just wanna give some advice, or you just wanna just tell your story, let us know inside the comment section below. Next, we're gonna talk about some common pitfalls to avoid. Now, again, overspending, we just talked about that. Not only do you not want to keep, uh, swipe more than the actual like seven to 10% as far as the utilization is concerned and keeping it you know, well under that limit, you don't wanna go over the limit. If you go over the limit, many credit card companies are gonna charge you an over the limit fee. Also carrying a high balance. If you're constantly carrying these balances and not paying it off in full, they're going to charge you interest and you're gonna end up paying more than what you originally borrowed in the first place. Then number two, applying for multiple credit cards in a short period of time. A lot of times people think, well, I got this credit card, it pushed my credit score up. Let me go ahead and get another one or two more credit cards. That's not the case. You most definitely need a credit card to help you build your credit, but there are great alternatives. But anytime that you're adding a lot of accounts in a very short period of time, doesn't matter what type of account it is, it's going to affect your average age of credit history. So essentially, if you keep getting new, new accounts, you're gonna have a very small history unless you're just starting out. I would say every three to six months, get about three or four credit cards or three or four accounts in general, and it can be a mix. This can be credit cards, personal loans, auto loans, mortgage loans, student loans. Don't just get things to build your credit. Things are gonna naturally happen just throughout life in general, and you'll be able to build your credit that way for sure. And obviously missing payments, but what are we gonna do to keep that from happening? Turning on auto pay. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you on the next one.